Hey folks, welcome. In this video, we're going to look at partial fractions and partial fraction decomposition. And what we're doing when we do partial fractions is when we start with a fraction like this, we say, what two fractions did we add together to get this? Instead of starting with the fractions and getting a common denominator and turning them into this form, we're starting in this form and we're working backwards into this form. And the reason we do that is in calculus, this is really difficult to integrate. These two are much simpler to integrate. So it's, it's, it's to our benefit to rewrite this in this form. And so in order to see how to break this into two fractions, let's look at how we add these together to get in this form, because that's going to lend some insight as to how we undo that process over here to the right. So what we do first, if we were trying to add these two together, is I get my common denominator. And my common denominator is going to be the product of x minus 5 and x minus 6. So I can multiply by this form of 1 by this fraction on the left, and by this form of 1 by this fraction on the right. And then look, you've created this denominator of x minus 5 times x minus 6 in both fractions. And therefore, you can write the whole thing as one big old fraction. Now, sorry, I left off my parentheses there. There should be parentheses right there. But 9 times x minus 6 plus 4 times x minus 5 is right here. And then we're just going to simplify by distributing. I distributed the 9 into this parentheses and the 4 into this parentheses. And then we can combine our like terms. And sorry, that kind of goes off the screen there, but you can see what it is. And so we started here and we added them together to get here. Now, what we do when we do a partial fraction decomposition is we're going to start here and we're going to try to work backwards through this process and end up here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with this problem over here is I know that whenever I break this up into two separate fractions, it's going to be some number over x minus 5 plus some unknown number over x minus 6. Now, before I get any further, you might see a problem here where this is written as a trinomial and not as something times something else. If it's written as a trinomial, go ahead and factor it, okay? Because you want the denominator in factored form before you get started. So we're, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve and figure out what A is and what B is. If I can figure out what those are, then I know what my fractions were that we added together to get this. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply by that form of fancy 1. So I'm going to multiply by x minus 6 over x minus 6 over here on the left. And over here, I'm going to multiply by x minus 5 over x minus 5. By doing that, my numerator becomes a times x minus 6 plus b times x minus 5 all over x minus 6 times x minus 5. Then I can distribute ax minus 6a plus bx minus 5b and I still got it over the same old stuff x minus 6 times x minus 5. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rearrange the terms. And right now it might not make sense. Uh, trust me on this one. I'm going to rearrange my terms so that my x terms are next to each other and that this negative 6a and negative 5b are next to each other because those are just constants. Remember, a and b are just numbers. They're unknown numbers, but they're just numbers. They're not variables. So I'm going to rewrite it as ax plus bx minus 6a minus 5b all over x minus 6 times x minus 5. Now, I'm going to go to my next slide, so I'm just going to take a quick snip of this. I've copied everything over to this slide so we can see where we left off. And so what we did is we, we grouped our terms with x, our linear terms, next to each other. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to factor an x out of both of those terms. Once again, just trust me, you'll see why in a minute. And it might actually help you if I write it with x on the right side. We could, you know, I could write it with the x in front or I could write it with the x at the end. And then we got minus 6a minus 5b over stuff. Now, notice what we've got here. I'm going to copy down the left side of our equation to 13x minus 74 over x minus 5 times x minus 6. Now, as we look at this, our denominators are the same, so I'm not worried about the denominators. This denominator matches this one, so let's ignore those for now. Maybe you even want to think of it as multiplying both sides by the denominator, just get rid of it, whatever. What I see is this. I have some coefficient next to x. Remember, a and b are just constants, so a plus b is some number, like 72 or like 34 or maybe 13, right? If we have some number next to x plus a constant equals some number next to x plus a constant, it's safe to say that the a plus b must be equal to 13 because they are both x's coefficient. Okay, let me make my 13 a little prettier. 
And then same thing over here. If I have negative 6a minus 5b, which is a constant, and on the left side of my equation, I have negative 74, which is a constant, is it safe to say that negative 6a minus 5b must be equal to negative 74? I hope you're saying yes, that's okay. And now look what we got here. You're having flashbacks to algebra one. It's a good old fashioned system of equations. So you could solve using any method of your choosing. I'm gonna solve with substitution. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna rewrite it as b equals 13 minus a by subtracting a on both sides of the equation. And then I'm gonna take 13 minus a and substitute in for b in my second equation. So negative 6a minus 5b equals negative 74. And then we distribute pew pew, negative 6a minus 65 plus 5a equals negative 74. And I'm going to combine my like terms, which gives me negative 1a, and then I'm going to add 65 to both sides, which gives me, um, I believe, 9, okay, um, actually negative 9. So if negative 1a equals negative 9, we can divide by negative 1 on each side and get that a equals 9. Now, if a equals 9, we know that a plus b equals 13. So if a equals 9, that means that b must equal 4. And you might be tempted to stop here and say, ta-da, I found a and b. But remember, don't forget what we're doing. Remember, our whole goal was to write the partial fraction decomposition. And what we said early on is we said 13x minus 74 over stuff can be broken down into two fractions of the form a over x minus 5 plus b over x minus 6. So our actual answer here is not that a equals 9 and b equals 4, but it's these fractions. We know that a here is 9 and b here is 4. If you were to take these two fractions and add them together like a rational expression by getting a common denominator, boom, you would end up there. So that is a long process, but the more of these you do, the better you'll get. What you'll want to do is watch my next video because it talks about what if our denominator looks a little different? What if I have x minus 5 squared in my denominator? Then how do I do that problem? And like I said, we'll address that in the next video.